What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Browner. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up the shot. Oh, what a goal! Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserved the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Edmund, head of this weekend's game. Down in that there, London against Millwall. A Millwall side that seems to have turned a corner recently after a slow start, but obviously we'll get into that when we bring the Millwall fan in. Um, but obviously I just want to remind everybody that this weekend is, I think it's Millwall's game where they're raising funds for the, uh, the Royal British Legion, so like the, the poppies and things like that. So just a quick reminder, I know Burnley fans always give generously, so you don't need me to tell you, but just a reminder, because it might not be on the forefront of your mind with it not being the actual weekend. But obviously, this is the closest home game that Millwall have to the event, so they will be raising funds. So if you do have any spare change, please feel free to take it and give generously. But Burnley fans always do, and we know that. But obviously, as you can see, if you're watching on the, uh, YouTube, we are joined, as always, by a fan of the opposition, and that is Omer, and he is from That Millwall Podcast. How are you doing, mate? Not too bad, thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on, mate. It's um, always a pleasure. Uh, always a pleasure. Um, but let's talk about Millwall then. Obviously, that's what this is show about. Uh, this show is about, should I say, where we get the law down on the opposition. So talk to me about Millwall then, because I look, just looked at the league table then before I sent you the link this morning. Noticed that you were 10th. Now, I, kn I knew you'd had some good results recently. Uh, and, and to be fair, I don't check the league table sort of like every single week. Well, I might check where Burnley are, but I don't, I don't bother with anybody else uh, at, at this stage of the season. Of course. And I remember when I glanced at the league table around, or what felt like around three, four weeks ago, Millwall were down at the bottom. And then I've checked it again today and you're 10th. So uh, I presume this, there was a slow start followed by sort of like an upturning results. Yeah, exactly that, Joe. I think we started our season short on options. We've had, you know, we've had to do a lot of deadline, close to deadline business in a sense. I think in turn that kind of contributed to our form at the start of the season. We had a kind of good performances in a sense, but we weren't getting the results to kind of match it really. And I think we've gone into September now, October, then obviously leading to now November, where we're kind of in a position where we're looking up a little bit. And I think it's positive for us. Obviously, we'll take place. I think if you ask any middle fan after 12 games, would we take tech place? The answer would be absolutely. Um, yeah, last few weeks we started to kind of eke out performances. We're keeping clean sheets, hard to beat, and the older kind of tip to stereotypical kind of jargon you can throw out to the championship, really. But yeah, yeah. I think um, it should be an interesting game on Sunday, nonetheless. Yeah, fingers crossed. Obviously, we'll get into sort of like the, the game later in the show. But just, just going through your results, obviously, you started off uh, with a home defeat against Watford, who, to be fair, did have a decent start. Uh, they have faded a little bit recently. Um, and then a 4-3 defeat at Bristol City, obviously not counting the EFL Cup. Uh, so quite a lot of goals in your first two games. Um, mm -hmm. Then, obviously, a 0-0 at Hull, which, you know, a draw at Hull. Uh, a draw, mm -hmm. a draw at Hull, should I say? Um, you know, not to be sniffed at. He says just after getting a draw at Hull. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, and then I don't know when it turned, but then you've got a result here against Sheffield Wednesday, where you absolutely battered them three nil. Lost at home um, to Luton, who ex Premier League team to be fair, but you know they haven't had a great start. But then you've got draws against QPR, uh, and then it's probably where it turned here, maybe. And then just just looking at the Preston result, where, where you beat Preston 3-1, but you did have a man sent off, but then you get beat against Cardiff after that. But then after that, 
yeah, it's it's decent results pretty much all the way, isn't it? So what what what, what what's different then? Have you have you finally settled on a style of play, or, or is it like you said, um, someone came in on on deadline day or towards the latter end of the transfer window? It's very simplistic to say, but we've just done a show ourselves. And I kind of came out of the line. So the season has been 12 games, but our last 10, we've conceded five goals. And mm. if you looked at our side, the first two games of the season, you pointed out the 4 3 and the 3 2. We didn't have Jaffet Tanganga available, who is, uh, you know, we'll get on to players in a bit if you like, but he is um, a real kind of key linchpin, I think, in our, set, in our central defensive pairing. And I think he's brought confidence back to the side. He wasn't available for the first two games. He got suspended the last game of last season. And also we managed to get him on a permanent deal. And I think it's, it's very simplistic to put it on one player, but we've obviously since then signed more players to make more options in the attack in the forward areas. But I think defensively, we've shored things up and we've also got a bit of quality in the forward areas. That has kind of mm. led to us in, increasing mm. our form. Really. And I think being hard to beat, but also having that moment of quality is kind of a key success in this league, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think that's one thing we are lacking at the minute is just having that bit of quality up front. We just, we are probably, well, we, we have the best defence in the league like in terms of goals conceded. We have the best defence in the league. So it worries me that, you know, I've seen quite a few nil-nils recently involving yeah. Burnley. You, you've just said there that, you know, you've only conceded, um, what was it, five goals in your last 10? Yeah. Um, I've, I've probably got a similar amount to us, so I'm, I'm worried now maybe it's going to be a nil-nil again. Yeah, I've got up on it actually. I think in the last ten games, you've scored eight, conceded four. We've scored ten, conceded five. It doesn't it doesn't set up to be promising of games, if I'm totally honest. But it'll be interesting nonetheless. Yeah, I think I think our problem is at the minute is is scoring goals. Like I've said, we, we, mm. I mean, I'm not going to it too much. Obviously, we'll do that hopefully uh, uh, with a happy full time show um, probably on Sunday evening. But um, yeah, I've been saying quite a lot on our, on our recent full time shows. We've just been <clears throat> excuse me, we've we've just been getting into the final third and. Just don't have that cutting edge. I think we're just lacking that cutting edge, but we don't have a striker. And obviously, we have been playing Zian Fleming in that number nine role, and, and, and he's not a number nine, he's a number 10. But that obviously brings me nicely um, on to sort of like Zian Fleming. Obviously, I'm sure you'd have been gutted to see him go. Obviously, can't play this weekend because he's actually on loan from you guys at the minute with a view to buy at the end of the season. Yes. Uh, I think, well, I think it's an obligation uh, to buy at the end of the season. But talk to me about Zian, like, what did he do for you guys? Because obviously, <clears throat> I, I speak to uh, another guy on your podcast, and he was messaging me uh, up the um, towards the the deadline day, sort of like saying he's a brilliant player, he'll do really well for you. And he's not really been played in his proper position yet. Um, he's always been played in the nine um, because of injuries. Like we not get to see him in his in his proper role. But what what did he do for you guys that, that you know made so many Millwall fans fall in love with him? And what can we expect to see from him when he finally gets played in his in his uh, preferred position? Yeah, sure. I mean, we signed him initially from Fortuna Sittard, what, two and a bit seasons ago now. And he arrived as a bit of an unknown. I think it was at the time a club record transfer. And obviously it was kind of like £1.8 million. Pounds, so it's not a lot, but for us, that is mm. significant amount of money at the time. And um, he arrived and obviously had this kind of the adjustment period to the league. But he went on to score like something like 15 goals, I think, in his first season. It was definitely like mid-double figures. But him and Tom Brash at the time sparked up a partnership. But... He is a number 10, a conventional number 10, but he's not yeah. one of those to get on the ball and look to Fred Park. He's, he's, he has an all-round presence to his game. I'm sure you, you lot have seen him week in, week out of late. And he, I think what impressed me most about Fleming is he's kind of, he's, he's kind of, he led the line in the sense that, he was, yes, he played the 10 position, but he also had the kind of tendency to puff his chest out and like kind of lead from the front. And with that yeah. kind of came his attitude to kind of get the team forward. And he kind of grew into the team and you saw off the field as well, his influence in the dressing room. He was a real talisman for us in the first season. Second season went a bit off the boil. Obviously, you guys went through him, and I think the summer before when you guys got promoted to the Premier League, and yeah. we're talking 14, 15 million pounds now. And that, back then, I think it's half the fee, roughly, they reckon. So, yeah, I mean, look, no middle fan will begrudge Fleming the move. Obviously, he was as ambitious to try and get to the Premier League. But yeah, I think from us, it was we missed that kind of real kind of presence in the forward areas, albeit he is a number 10, like you said. But yeah, great player. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's good to see hear you say that he's a number 10 because obviously we've only really seen him in the nine. Ironically, mm. he's, he's scored one goal for Burnley so far and that's when he was dropped into the 10 for about five minutes against Hull where he came into 10, scored a header, coming sort of like onto it late into the box, header, and then Scott Parker took him off, which, you know, infuriated a lot of Burnley fans. But we haven't <laughs> had a chance to see him in that 10 because we've got so many injuries. But I think the plan for us is to play him as part of sort of like a, a four... 
some pe- people always say we play one up front, but I kind of see it as sort of kind of like a forward four. You've obviously got the two um, on the left wing and the right wing, and then ideally a striker like Lyle Foster in the nine, and then Fleming in the ten. Do you think he'd work just behind a, a, a proper striker in that ten role with two forwards either side of him? Yeah, I believe so. I think whilst he's we're labelling it a ten, he was kind of a second forward in the sense he joined the attack a lot, like you said, late into yeah. the box. He really does suit that side of his play, and I think also giving the ball in them sort of areas where he can affect the game, albeit you know he might travel up the field with it and bring it on. But I think yeah, definitely with a strike partner, he seems to have benefited that with us and the conventional four four two in a sense. But him being the second forward was the optimal kind of performance that we got out of him at the time. Fair enough, that might be something um, that hopefully we get to see soon. Obviously, our main striker, Lyle Foster, is injured. We have a lot of injuries, mate. I don't know if you've looked at it, but we do have a lot of injuries at the minute. And obviously, Zian can't play in this game as well. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> this forward, um, so like these issues up, up top that we've had that I've mentioned are going to be even worse this week. So, I'm not really holding out any hope for many goals. But again, we'll get into predictions uh, mm. later on. Um, just going, uh, just mentioned then Scott Parker obviously has West Ham connections. So I'm expecting um, him to get sort of like a frosty reception from you guys. He did allude to it a little bit in his press conference this week, the local reporter from the Burnley Express. So like I said, obviously got West Ham connections. It's the first time we've been uh, to Millwall with Scott Parker as manager. So what, what sort of reception can we expect for Scott Parker? Are you guys kind of sort of like over it now because it's been a few years ago? I think, yeah, I don't think it'll be the most frostiest of receptions that we might have seen for the likes of, you know, Ray Rooney got Ray Rooney got the reception the other day, for example, because Rooney's ex-England international and all that stuff. And I think that was kind of a frosty reception, I'd say. I think there will be, obviously, the West Ham chance. There will be all kind of things thrown his way. But I think for us, Sunday, you mentioned at the start of the show, it's our Remembrance Game fixture. But also, for me, the manager's been calling out for it in the week in his press conference to make it a real intimidating atmosphere. We know we've got a big week coming. We've got Burnley yeah. at home, followed by Leeds at home. And if you're Millwall, that doesn't get any bigger than that in this division, where it's like a chance to get you know, real momentum going. Because as I mentioned, obviously, earlier on, the form starts to turn. You mentioned injuries. Well, we've actually got nearly a full fit squad now. And that's the first time we can say that all season. So we've had three or four players return to full training. So the real momentum is starting to garner in a sense. But we know nonetheless, like you guys have got immense quality in your squad. I know you're saying about the injuries, but I look through your team. I probably have every single player on, on the team sheet still for playing for us. So there is that golfing quality, I'd say. But what our manager is really good at is turning that and force our kind of edge. Our edge will be trying to get the atmosphere going at the den, trying to make it intimidating for your players. And I think not having Fleming in your side, also having the experience of playing there previously, I think hopefully that will be what we do. Look to find an edge, try and make it intimidating, try and make it hostile. And that will be how we hopefully try to ruffle some feathers in the Burnley side. Yeah, to be fair, it's always always uh, you know a hostile atmosphere down at the den, isn't it? You know, it, it is known for that. Um, so if you, if you can, you know crank it up a notch from what you guys are normally used to, then, yeah, we, we do have a lot of, um, sort of like, not inexperienced, but inexperienced players in this league that might be like, oh, shit, what, what's this? Like, I'm, I'm not used to this. All right, some people might say, well, they played at Anfield and stuff last season, but, you know, Anfield's pretty quiet these days, um, to be fair. <laughs> Villa Park is what Anfield used to be, um, to be fair. I think I think, I think that's how I look at it these days. Um, speaking of managers, Neil Harris, back for, what, the third stint at, at Millwall, is it? I think it is. Obviously, one being a caretaker. Um, how's he getting on? Obviously, we've spoke about the season, but how's he getting on in in, in his in his third role uh, as Millwall Gaffer? Is it, everyone happy with him at the minute? Uh, he's he's marmite, as always is the case with football fans. Don't get me wrong; some people love him, some people love him. I'm definitely in the camp of loving him. I mean, obviously, his backstory is he's club legend, all time yeah. leading goal scorer. Got us promoted the first time round as manager. He's come back in February, kept us up against all odds last season. And then he's kind of got the opportunity this season to take it on and see what he can do with it, really. I think, obviously, we started the season with them two weird defeats that you mentioned earlier on. And it's kind of, you know, he's kind of been labelled in the past for his kind of old school style of play. Maybe perhaps how Burnley fans might associate with Sean Dyche. I'm, I'm speculating mm. there, but that's sort of a similar thing. And I think, for, for me anyway, I, I love the competitive nature he brings to our side. But he's started to evolve. And I think, for me, it's, it is kind of 50-50 split. But... You know, we're tenth place in the championship after last season being in the doldrums. So we can't ask for much more than that, really. I feel. Yeah, well, I weren't going to ask this because I, I just presumed you'd say yes. Everybody loves him. Look, mm. these people that dislike him, then what's their complaints? Because, like you said, you mentioned last year, like there was one point where I remember looking at the league table last year because 
I were looking at the championship relegation battle with a lot of interest, hoping that Blackburn Rovers got relegated. Obviously, in the end, thank you, Leicester and Leeds, they didn't. Um, but uh, obviously, you guys at one point looked pretty, not dead and buried, but it looked un, you know, like, like very much like you'd probably go down. You managed to get out of it. Uh, and like you said, club legend as well. So these people that dislike him, what is their argument for disliking somebody that's done so much for you? It's just his style of play, I think. But I think it's evolved a lot as a fan. And I, I really do. Like, I think we've got players... That, We've got the work ethic is what he installs into the side. And it is true in that sense. You know, we demand yeah. 110%. You've got to be a middle team. You've got to compete. You've got to have 100% effort every game. That is the bare minimum. But then we've also got the players in the areas, in the forward areas, that have the quality to win the games. The likes of Romain Esso, who is 19 years old, tipped to go further on. He will go further on after this season, I believe. I truly believe that. And But what he's installed in a play like him is he didn't play him towards the end of last season, but he was asking of him to do what a winger should do at middle, trap back. You know, put the effort in. And I think he's added that quality to these players. But I think the fans, it's it's uh everyone wants to play like Pep Guardiola, tiki oh, tack, even at Millwall, yeah. and, I, and it infuriates me. I'll be honest with you, mate, because like I know what we're I know what we're about. We've never been in the Premier League. We don't have the parachute monies. We're competing at our level, but we need to find what we're good at to do that. And I'm not saying route one every five seconds. It's not that, in my opinion, anyway. But everyone wants the kind of modern style of passing out from the back, playing it around. We don't need to do that, in, in my opinion. And I think that's what the real kind of criticism is of the manager, really. It's funny you mention that because there's been a, a massive gripe towards Scott Parker in, on his style of play by some big Burnley pages and a lot of people on Twitter. It's got to the point now where if, if like, when we drew it on to QPR, Twitter was so toxic, mate. And don't get me wrong, it, it, it's, it's not a good result drawing at home against QPR when you've got yeah. ambitions to win the league and stuff. I get that. Um, but the performance wasn't horrendous. But you'd be looking at it that like Scott Parker were part of you know Al-Qaeda, but some of the reactions that the, the, the Burnley fans had had. <laughs> But it wasn't that bad. It, it was just yeah. in the final third. We're just, just not good enough. And again, we have a lot of injuries. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's the modern football fan, isn't mm. it, these days? Everybody, it as is. you mentioned, wants to play in a certain way. Like, I understand people that want to win. I get that. Um, but, yeah, uh, second in the league. And, you know, uh, I think I saw a stat that since the, the 1st of September, nobody's picked up as many points in the Championship than Burnley. I was surprised to see that stat, I'm not going to lie, uh, with some of the res results that we've had. A draw at home to Preston, draw away at Hull, draw at home to QPR. We have had a, an easier run of fixtures that we probably should have done better with. Um, mm. But still, it, it's not all doom and gloom as, uh, as some Burnley fans have made out at the minute. Although, when I said that on my fan reaction uh, last week, somebody said, told me, they're, I'm unsubscribing to this channel. How could you think that after watching that? It's like, I have a different opinion to you, mate. Let's let's just calm down. Um, but obviously, you'll be looking to hurt us. I did see a stat this week, and somebody who prepares their shows a little bit better would, would bring this stat in now, but um, I, I didn't save it and did prepare the show in any way, shape or form, other than just a few bullet points on a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> but I did see one, and it was like shot quantity and shot quality. You may have seen it doing the rounds on Twitter. Burnley were quite low on shot quality and quantity, and Millwall were quite high on shot quality and shot quantity. Um, so that tells me that you play in a certain way. Like, yes, it might be sometimes route one, as you've just mentioned in, in the style of play, but you play in a certain way where you get the ball forward quickly or successfully and try and, you know, come at teams, attack teams. Like, how, how are you expecting Millwall to set up? Is, is that a fair assessment? Are you going to come at us and try and attack us? Precisely that. I think we played Plymouth the other week at home and you get the ground balls, but we had 39% possession, but we had doubled the amount of shots on goal as them and we'd got the ball forwards. And it is, that's how we play by nature. We're not, we, we will look after the ball a bit around the back more than probably we had done in the past. So there is a bit of an evolution there, but it will be a case of can we get forward in the, in the wide areas? Can we try and get the likes of Roman SA on the ball? Can we kind of get our four players to make an impact on the game, really? And I think. That's what any good mill team, at least in my lifetime, has had to done. You know, play in the wide areas, get balls into the box, you know, be up and at them, really, in a sense. So, yeah, that would be kind of what I expect. I, I suspect you guys will be looking to retain possession, pass it around. We'll try and press you on occasion without trying to get hurt by that because you've got the players that can play through us in, in, in real quality. So, it's an interesting kind of shape up. Yeah, it's, it's it, weird. I mean, I. How pragmatic is is Neil Harris? Is he likely to change that style based on based on Burnley? Because what we have done, what what we've struggled with, as I've mentioned, it, it is goals. And if a team sits in the low block and just says, "You break us down," the chances of them break the chances of us breaking them down are slim to none, mate. Like we we struggled up front. Like Preston came to the turf and just sat back. QPR came to the turf and just sat back. Blackburn, you know, they got a lucky goal and then they just sat back. Um, so we have struggled to break teams down in the low block. I, I get a little bit of 
happiest when an opposition fan tells me, no, we're going to attack you. Because if, if you're going to attack us, I'm hoping then that we do, as you said, have the quality mm. to pick teams off. So are you expecting to set up in the same way or do you think you might be a little bit pragmatic? you think Neil Harris might look at that and think, mm, we might be a little bit more cautious than if Burnley struggled to break teams down? I think we'll have a bit of both. Like, whilst I said that obviously we're attacking and having chances, we're having less of the ball. So we will be within our shape and that is the case. I think it, the interesting dynamic, dilemma does come then in the home games where you've got, you know, a full house, mm. everyone's like, come on, get after them. It is going to be 6-1, one half dozen the other. I think we'll ease our way. I feel like we'll start the game fast and come out of the blocks. That's what my gut says because, you know, hopefully it's a big atmosphere. He's called for the atmosphere to be passionate. And, you know, and if he, he knows the entertainment mill side it is to get the ball forward in the areas and try and affect the game, it will be conservative at times, obviously. But I think, yeah, it will be quite pragmatic, but also I think we'll have a go. So, that, that's my fear with you guys because you have got the quality that can pick us apart in the moment, even though you've got the injuries that you mentioned. Yeah, we're going to say like if if we had Lyle and Zian up top, then I, I would be a little bit more confident. But um, yeah, it, I, I don't even know who's going to play up top at the minute. Will it be Jay Rodriguez? Will it be Hunt Andre? Jay Rodriguez is a similar age to me, and I can barely walk down the stairs these days. And Hunt Andre came in in the summer and didn't look great, if I'm honest, but I would like to see him given a bit more of a run out. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who we play up front and, and if we can get the ball, you know, to them, how well they do. But um, yeah, I do feel like we're more suited to away games because teams are likely to open up for us. Um, mm. But you've got a good defence. We've got a good defence. I'm not holding out too much hope um, for, for an entertaining game. And remember, Sky have chosen. Sky looked at this game and went, yes, we'll have that. We'll stick that on telly. Um, so just remember, everyone, it is Sunday, by the way, because Andrew, who does our graphics for us, forgot, sent me the graphic and said, here's your graphic for Saturday, mate. I'm like, what are you on about? It's Sunday. So just remember, if you are listening to this and you forgot, Sunday, three o'clock is a kickoff live on Sky. Um, I do want to talk about individuals. Um, what sort of players on your side, mate, should should we be looking out for and what, and what sort of players can 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 hurt Burnley? Yeah, I've, I've mentioned him a couple of times already, but our, one of our own, Romain SA, 19 years old, he's part of the England on 20 setup, signed a new contract in the summer. It came out in the press that during the week he's been linked to a move to Crystal Palace of all teams, which is obviously not good for us to hear as fans. But I think he's come on that sort of reputation now. He's he's a real kind of influencer on the game. He'll try and get on it. We'll try and free him in the right in, on the right hand side, similar to the mould of Bukayo Saka, Saka. I'd say if you want a comparison, where he's yeah. on his left foot, it cuts in on the, from the right. We'll try and drift in through the field and try and have an impact for us. Really, elsewhere, I mean, we've got. You know, for various different options up front, um, we've signed a Serbian called Ivanovic, who is trying to make himself like Mitrovic, and he's he's a handful, uh, I'd say. Um, but yeah, obviously, like I mentioned at the back, Tanganga in the central defence yeah. is key to us really defensively. Um, and yeah, we'll, it'll be interesting to see what kind of he comes out against. Obviously, if you say Jay Rodriguez, be a handful for him perhaps, but you've got Cooper and uh, Tanganga at the back, so it'll be an interesting battle. Yeah, I'm not sure with Jay. I'm not sure with Jay, but we'll see. I love Jay, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Done a lot for Burnley Football Club, but like I said, you know, it's 2024 um, and, you know, I, th I think he's 34, 35. Um, mm. So uh, even if he does start, I doubt he'll play a full game. Might, might maybe get subbed off around 50th minute, 55th, 60th, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what, what, what? What what have you seen of Burnley so far this season? What are your thoughts are on Burnley and, and their style of play? And, and if you haven't seen much of Burnley, obviously you'll have come up against Scott Parker sides in the past before. Um, we are very much similar to the way Fulham and Bournemouth have played. And I think it's fair to say so far this season. So what are your thoughts on, on Burnley and the style of play that they do? Yeah, I watched your first game of the season. I think, was it Luton away? Um, yeah. I caught that the telly and that was um, like, oh, here we go. And I think everyone kind of... Gave you guys yeah. the league title. It was the last time I got that, mate. I can't, I can't lie. <laughs> but no, I've seen bits and bobs. I've kept an eye on it. Obviously, seeing how Fleming's getting on as well, really, because yeah, obviously we'll we'll be we miss him, but I still wish I obviously wish to play well and hopefully he kicks on a bit. And I know he was injured initially, wasn't he, at one point? So yeah, um, I've seen some of your games. I think you're going to be efficient with the ball. I know what you're going to be like. You know, you're going to look after the ball in, in them sort of areas and try and hit us in the wide areas as well. I think you've got a few good players there that really catch my eye, but. Yeah, you mentioned these attacking options being missing. It does give me a bit of confidence, I'm not going to lie, but you never get too confident as a football fan, I suppose. No, no. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that because, yeah, everyone always sort of like a lose back to that game. I mean, it helps that we were on TV, obviously. Um, but obviously scored four goals in that game, five mm -hmm. in the game the week after against Cardiff. So that's nine goals in the first two games. All season, we've scored 17. So we scored nine in them <laughs> first two and we haven't even scored as much in the rest of the season. Um, but there was a lot of sales we did lose a lot of quality um there were some good players that played in them two games that are no longer here um so 
uh, yeah, but I think it's at the stage now where we should really be starting to click or thinking of clicking, but again, a lot of injuries. Um, so we might have to wait a few more weeks for that. Um, predictions then, please, mate. Obviously, we've mentioned sort of like um, how you expect Millwall to set up and stuff. So um, what what sort of game are you expecting? Before you get into the score, what sort of game are you expecting? I think, I think I've already alluded to the fact that I'm expecting it to be tight. I think if someone wins it, they win it 1-0, um, probably nil nil something like that as well not a lot of goals two good defenses burnley not with a great attack so i yeah i'm not expecting a lot of goals mate what sort of game are you expecting yeah similar really i think it'll be more played within within the tactics in a sense maybe not try you know when's the right time to press when's the right time to kind of engage in a sense really i think it will be quite cagey i think you guys will have the majority of the ball um, we'll keep our shape and when we get the ball we'll try and hit you with intent as I mentioned a few yeah. times and hopefully we can do that and cause some trouble if you guys, guys over commit in the wide areas then we'll try and hit you through lights, through flanks that sense I think it'll be tight I really do I, maybe a set piece might decide it we'll see yeah it's interesting because you say there if teams don't really punish us too much I feel like in the wide areas there'll be somebody in the in the comments with a stat ready to prove me wrong but I kind of feel like our fullbacks don't really go forward as much as I would like them to under Scott Parker mm -hmm. um so and I think that's why because he's a little bit wary of getting hit on the flanks um we actually are quite good I say quite good um we we have the ball a lot out wide um but then if we get past your defender which we might do like four or five times we won't actually do anything with the pass that's that that's where this lack of sort of like forward yeah. bite comes from um but yeah predictions for the score please then mate what sort of score are you predicting for this one yeah, we've got a big week coming up, like I mentioned, leads to follow. So I think we will be playing for not to lose, but hopefully hit you with some intent. I'll go with my heart. I'll go one nil Mill. Let's turn be a turn up for the books. I know you guys only lost one game all season, but hopefully we could be a second loss. I'll inflict it on you guys. There you go. <laughs> yeah, no worries, mate. I always respect somebody that predicts uh, they're on team to me because uh, I think I've, uh, people who watch the show every single week will say, why do you keep using this analogy? Or, I'm using it for you, mate. I went yeah. on to a Man City podcast last season and said, yeah, I'll go with my heart, mate. We're going to win 1-0. I'm not saying for one second, Burnley, Man City, we'll be not, we're not obviously nowhere near yeah. that, but that, I was sort of like predicting us to win when I probably knew deep down we wouldn't. Whereas I'm not saying you think deep down you wouldn't. You probably, if you look at the season so far, definitely have a chance. And especially with all the injuries, I'm going to go nil nil, mate. I'm I'm a little bit wary of of you at the minute. The injuries have have hit us um, quite hard recently. Um, I feel like we are going to be missing Z and we're going to be missing Lyle as well up front as well. Um, who knows? Parker might have a trick up his sleeve, um, and you know we might see somebody random in that position up front but if it's going to be Jay Rodriguez or Hontondre I'm not the most confident that we'll manage to get on the score sheet who knows Josh Brown will pop up what we want he's done quite well this season Josh Brown uh, does very well in the championship despite some of the um negative things that some Burnley fans think about him I think I think the good thing about Josh Brown for this game is if Scott Parker picks the team right is Josh Browner will be playing in that 10 position and and, and and he does well in that 10 position that's where it can pop up with a goal every now and then so even if it is Jay then Josh Brown will, will hopefully uh, be able to get a goal um, for us. And who knows? But yeah, I'm predicting nil-nil and not exactly a classic, mate. I think just on the levels there, like to, to have criticism or doubts over the likes of Josh Brown, we could dream of a midfield of someone like Josh Brown in there. To <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think like, what I'd say is if this game was played at Turf Moor, I'd be 95% sure you guys would win this game quite comfortably. Like Away from home, we seem to be a bit you know, up and down. But like I said, just tipping that den factor into it and the nature of the game on Sunday for us, I do think it will hopefully influence in our way but yeah like you say it is more hope reality says maybe a nil-nil like you but I think one I'll, I'll back us like I said one nil so, yeah no yeah. fair enough it's weird you say that as well about the turf because we, well, that's where we've struggled we've struggled more at the turf mm. to break teams down because teams just sit in and we can't break them down we just need that extra quality up front to be able to turn these nil-nils and one-ones uh, into wins uh, right mate before we before we um, wrap it all up um, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and and, and that Millwall podcast and uh, if they want to digest some Millwall content before the game or, or after the game yeah absolutely uh, we're found on socials at that mill pod and we're on YouTube Spotify all them sort of places where you can find your podcast and consume them I don't know when this is going to be loaded Joe but we do do a Friday night live show which goes out on Friday evening so mm. if you're watching this and it's really out by then maybe this is out tomorrow I don't know but um, we uh, do Friday live, live Friday night live shows we do try to invite people to come on from the wayside to give some comments in YouTube so just put it on out there yeah, fair enough. Uh, feel free to tag me in that when you go live, mate, and I'll retweet it because this will be going out before that. I normally put these out on Thursday, but obviously the game was a little bit later this week, um, so there was no rush when we were chatting about trying to get something done. 
Um, but yeah, I'll be pretty much putting this out straight away, to be honest with you, mate. Um, so yeah, this will be out and some fans will have listened before then. So if you do want to watch that tonight, uh, feel free. Well, Omar, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. I'll say what I always say now at the end of the se- at the end of the show. Good luck for the rest of the season, mate, but after the weekend. But what I will say is, mate, a special good luck against Leeds in your next home game. I don't, I'm don't. i not one of these fans that dives on all the hatred for Leeds, but obviously it's always fun to see them get beat. And it's looking like it's going to be them, us, maybe Sheffield United or Sunderland, you know, one of them teams up the top towards the end of the season. So any defeat for Leeds will be welcomed by any Burnley fan, mate. So please stick one on Leeds. We'll try our best. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.